My name is Danica, I'm a contributing editor at Book Riot, and today I wanted to talk about some of the best books you've never heard of. So The Best Books You've Never Heard Of is a series I started back in 2018 on Book Riot to highlight some of the books that don't get enough attention. So in my first post I just talked about some of the books that I love that don't get a lot of attention, don't get a lot of Goodreads ratings, and from there it opened up to a group post where a bunch of different writers talked about some little-known gems that they really love, and now since I'm making videos Videos, I thought I would try to adapt it to a video format. So this is going to be a bunch of different writers' contributions. One of them, P.N. Hinton, is going to be making an appearance, and everyone else's I'm just going to read myself, but it's their words. So the rule of thumb for the best books you've never heard of is that they are books that have under 250 Goodreads ratings. And you can actually go through your Goodreads books and see which ones hit this target. There's a way to sort by number of ratings, and then you can see which book that you've read that not a lot of other people have read, which I find really interesting. So I'm going to start off with a couple of my picks, starting with Prairie Ostrich by Tamai Kobayashi. This is set in rural Alberta in the 70s, and it follows eight-year-old Egg, whose family is falling apart after the death of her teenage brother. Her mother drinks all day, her father's barely there, and her older sister is trying to hold it all together while she's also coming out in a not very supportive environment. Egg is desperately trying to find the answer to make everything okay again, looking alternately to the dictionary, science, and religion. This is a quiet, thoughtful, and unforgettable story. My second pick is Gnarled Hollow by Charlotte Green. I love The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, and I consider it a queer classic even if it is just subtext. I've been looking for a read-alike, but I've never found anything that scratches that itch until I picked up Gnarled Hollow. A group of academics enter the former estate of an author only to find find out that it seems to shift dimensions. The relationships between the characters are really at the heart of this book, and it was immensely satisfying to read a Haunting of Hill House read-alike that also happened to have a canon lesbian relationship. This is one of the best haunted house stories that I've ever read. It nails that unsettling, claustrophobic, horror of the domestic vibe that I'm looking for in this genre. Nicole Hill recommends Fire Dance by Alana C. Meyer. In Nicole's words, Meyer's The Harp and Ring sequence novels are quietly some of the best high fantasy novels I've ever read. Last Song Before Night pops up on lists from time to time, but the second book set in the Kingdom of Ivar, Fire Dance, is criminally overlooked. In Ivar, the magic system is tied to songs and poetry. Lynn, who starts the first novel as an aspiring poet, now wields incredible power as the court poet. While she drives the story forward, you don't need to have read the first novel to enjoy this lyrical quest narrative. In Fire Dance, Lynn and other court advisors travel to a neighboring kingdom where dark magic is causing unrest. If you're a fan of Guy Gabriel Kay's books, this will be right up your alley. And here is P.N. Hinton's first recommendation. Hi, this is P.N. Hinton from Book Riot. The book I'm recommending you today is If These Shoes Could Talk by Tia McCullers. I think that's how you pronounce her name. It is a 30-day devotional for women, and the reason I'm recommending it is because out of all the devotionals I've ever read, this is the only one where every single chapter is applicable to something. I felt um, or spiritually enriched after everyone and I've read it twice now and each time I've come away with something new from the chapters. So if you're looking for a pick-me-up or some kind of, you know, spiritual refresher that you can journal with, I definitely recommend that. You won't regret picking it up because not only is it applicable and practical, it's also humorous. So it'll be something that you'd enjoy. Abby Hargrave suggests DIY watercolor flowers, the beginner's guide to flower painting for journal pages, handmade stationery, and more by Marie Bowden. In the time of COVID-19, I think many of us are reaching for new hobbies and pastimes. I picked up this how-to book a few months ago and it totally changed my approach to watercolor. Bowden breaks down the steps to creating gorgeous flower art both verbally and visually so that it's accessible to anyone. When I tried some of the strategies Bowden suggests, I was surprised at how beautiful they turned out. Whether you want to spruce up your bullet journal or want some nice watercolor paintings for your wall, this is a fantastic place to start. It'll make you feel like you were a pro all along. Cassie Gutman suggests Bent Heavens by Daniel Krauss. I heard about this book from other writers raving and I knew I had 
had to pick it up immediately. All the content warnings for this book, Liv's dad has disappeared. When he first showed up naked in the school parking lot, he claimed he was taken by aliens. And for the next year, he spends his time placing meticulously built alien traps. So after he vanishes, Liv finally feels a sense of relief and normalcy returning to her life. But when she's out in the woods and discovers that one of her dad's old traps has something inside of it, she begins to wonder if her dad was right all along. This is a horrifying and mesmerizing story of how far humans can and will go to blur morality and right and wrong, and I know it's going to stick with me for a long, long time. Tika Viteri recommends Moonshine by Jasmine Gower. It's the jazz age in Sit City, and Daisy has just begun her new job as a secretary. She's ready to take on this magical version of 1920s Chicago on her own, but the hijinks that ensue are unexpected and darkly delightful. Moonshine is a charming story of 20s slang and a plucky modern heroine in a yellow silk dress that I desperately envy but could never pull off. Daisy also has some of her own secrets, and that struggle between doing what is moral and what will keep her safe is the central conflict of the story. And here is P.N. Hinton's second recommendation. Hi, I'm Pian Hinton. Another book I'm going to recommend to you today is Tall, Dark, and Deadly by Karma Kelly. It is a paranormal romance, and the reason I'm recommending it is because it's a new spin and take on the genre. Vampires have come in and out of popularity recently, and they're cycling back in, um, as I've noticed. So I think if you're going to jump back into it, or you're going to dip your toe into that for the first time, this is a good one to pick up because it's very interesting, it's unique, it's very humorous, and it also brings in supernatural creatures that don't necessarily get a lot of screen screen or page time. So if you're looking for something that is not just about vampires, I think you'd really enjoy this. Summer Loomis recommends Trauma Red, The Making of a Surgeon in War in America's Cities by Peter Rhee. Rhee packs a lot into this book. Born in South Korea and brought up in Uganda for part of his life, Rhee eventually becomes a trauma surgeon, treating shooting victims and other ER patients in Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. He served 24 years with the U.S. Navy, which includes tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. He is also one of the medical professionals credited with saving U.S. Congresswoman Gabby Gifford's life when she, along with 18 others was critically injured in a mass shooting in 2011. It's a fascinating read and one that somehow doesn't get the attention it deserves. Summer also recommends Just Americans, How Japanese Americans Won a War at Home and Abroad by Robert Asahina. Asahina's book follows the recruitment and history of the 100th Battalion, or the 442D Regimental Combat Team, one of the most decorated units in American military history, and one that was comprised of soldiers of Japanese descent. The 442 2D included men that were recruited from internment camps across the mainland U.S., as well as some who were already in uniform and Japanese Americans serving from Hawaii. Among the last group was one of the highest ranking Asian American members of the U.S. government, Daniel Ken Inoue, who pursued a long and impressive career of public service until his death in 2012. Annika Bronte Klein recommends Lover's Choice by Becky Bertha, and she's keeping it concise by saying, This collection of short stories from the late 80s feels fresh today. Bertha's voice Voice shines. And finally, Jessica Pride recommends Low Down Dirty by Holly Trent. Holly Trent is one of my favorite romance authors, and she dropped this one on a random Thursday in September. It's definitely not for everyone. The leads meet outside of a BDSM party. They have commitment issues up the wazoo, and definitely have alternative views of sex and relationships. But there's a lot there about being a woman, a black woman especially, who doesn't think she can have it all, and works towards what she wants and a relationship on her own terms. Also, it's Holly Trent, so hot steamy sex is definitely on the menu. So that was the spring 2020 edition of the best books you've never heard of. I'll leave the links in the description for previous posts if you want to check out some other hidden gems. I love finding and promoting books that don't get the attention that they should. Let me know in the comments what your favorite books are that don't get enough attention. I highly recommend looking on Goodreads to see what your most obscure reads are, and all the titles we talked about will also be in the description, so definitely check those out and thank you for watching.